So I got Snake King with me here to join me for a bit of a getting to know moment. I'm new in the Dota world, but we're gonna find out a little bit more about you and just how you came to be, how you came to sit in the seat you're in now, and be playing Dota 2 at the high level that you are. So what I do to start off with is go really far back, right? Okay. Growing up in your household, your family, your childhood, what was that like? What was the, the snaking life before you <laughs> were snaking? Yeah, um, growing up, I've, I've always played games, a lot of games. Nice. Um, just I started with like PlayStation okay. back in the back in the old days. PlayStation, where PlayStation one, we're one. About. it was yeah. the original yeah. OG one, PlayStation one. You know, and because I grew up in China, China didn't have any Xboxes, so we I was only familiar with the PlayStation. It wasn't until America that I experienced that there were other play, uh, gaming stations. Yeah. Were, I'd never even seen a Nintendo sixty four or an Xbox before. Um, I started playing Dota just from Warcraft three. I was playing the original Warcraft Reign of Chaos yeah. and back then Dota was very different. It only had like, I remember the original Dota had one lane and it was like maybe like 14 heroes or something and then it was like a 3v3 game. It was not until Dota All-Stars that the game became like a three lane and there's a bunch more heroes yep. and the, the game kind of is, is what it is today. Yeah. And I remember the very first Dota All-Star hero I played was like Faceless Void. It had like a pretty, uh, pretty deep impressions on me because I, I was actually playing well for the first time and people were impressed and they, they, they com complimented me and I, I just remembered it very fondly. It was yeah, a, quite yeah. the pleasant experience. The positive reinforcement, yes, right? Yes, That's yes. For sure. You gotta have those positive reinforcements. <laughs> Definitely. That's just how life is. Dota, right, is where you, uh, it kind of captured your heart, captured your real competitive side of things. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come on to pod and bottom, right? The team yeah. that you were, you start off before we go to Dignitas side of things. Would you consider this part where you were taking it more seriously or was there before you'd already taken the decision to go more serious into it? Um, it wasn't too serious at first. I remember that when we formed the team, one tournament specifically, I think it was called R2DL. We beat the... the, the IG, which was like the one of like the China's strongest team, yeah. and we ended up winning that tournament, and it gave us like a huge confident boost. And in, in that tournament, we also beat Navi with Dendi, oh. who was like it was after TI won, who yeah. had won TI, so it was like a very coveted thing to beat Navi uh, back in the days. And it, it, that, that's like that was like the moment I was like, we're actually good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We can we can go far, and like that's kind of where I took took things a lot more seriously. Winning a really big championship is like, especially on land, is mm. is kind of what I'm looking for, and I just want to want to make it happen. We're talking about a decade plus, right? Your first international was in 2013. Yes, that so, was correct. That was I was still in high school. I was a wow. senior. I remember. It was like kind of the first time I really had a huge crowd watching. Yeah. I was just really nervous. <laughs> of course. And like being nervous is not good. I definitely was not the most emotionally stable and I I vented a lot of frustrations. My attitude wasn't the best. And okay. these things are something I look back and I'm like, yeah, I haven't worked worked on and improved a lot and something mm. I'm still working on. Because there's, there's, the there's like ever grinding, you know? You can never achieve yeah. perfection, but you can strive for it. Did it feel like a, like a, something that was natural to go join Na'Vi in that sense? Na'Vi is a very coveted organization and I was very happy to be a part of it. But it ended up being short term because we bombed out at TI and then the team kind of crumbled afterwards. You're studying in college is obviously very hard. What were you studying in college? Um, computer science. Ever thought, thought in your mind about, oh, maybe I need to not play anymore? Maybe I need to slow things down? It just kept happening. It just kept happening. <laughs> it, it was just like, I'll just play for fun. And then it was not until I graduated when I went for, I think it was Team Freedom at the time. Yeah. That, that when I went to try to play for the TI qualifiers, I, that, that's, that's when I declined three job offers at the time after graduation. Wow. To, to try to play competitive for one year and see where to go. And we failed at Team Freedom. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, luckily, I was invited to join VGJ Storm. Uh, an organization they paid me a salary and everything at the time and it, it, it just kept me going we qualified to the, the eighth international as VGJ storm representing yeah. America and that was the best result I've had top eight you yeah. know and it, it was I still remember like we lost to team secret 2-0 very crushing de defeat and experience mm. because 
It's the first time I have such a, had a, such a good team um, that we were able to go far, and I felt like we could have went even further if you know, maybe a few things went our way. If I play had played better, and you can't help but to have these thoughts, you know. Of course, of course, right? You you do your own internal review of it, right? I I played for another year, and then I went to the Ninth International as team forward. We ended up crushing the our opponent in the finals three to one. Um, it was actually JSTORM. They rebranded my old organization. Last bit of revenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get to go to the TI once again, which is like every Dota player's dream is to just go to TI and play. And hopefully you do well. Uh, but I didn't get complacent. I really wanted to win. And that year we ended up also not doing too well. We got 9th to 12th. We lost to Infamous, the current Beast Coast. And they, they, they were a very good team. Like this was when everyone would, had underestimated South America. They kind of proved the world like, you know, South America is not, it's not to be, you know, laughed at. Mm. And they, they can put up a fight. What do you make of where NA Dota is at right now? I think NA Dota is currently in a really bad state. I think it just, it just stems from the low, low player base. In Europe, there's like, 10 times more games happening yep. and 10 times the player base and that just means there are going to be way more good players in Europe and then good players will foster great players. NA as a region as a whole right now just just lack players. When I was finally given the opportunity after the pandemic to play for Tundra, I kind of initially it was another rocky start but this Were you team, surprised at this offer? Yes. Were you like, it was like out of nowhere for you? Oh, the Tundra offer. Yeah, yes. yeah. It was, it was a, bit, it was very random. I, it, <laughs> I think it was 33 initially at the time. They, he told me that the Biver had left the team for whatever reason, and he offered me a slot, mm. and I joined Tundra. Things just got better. We were able to improve, and we ended up winning some, some, some tournaments um, afterwards as well. So, I was very happy with that. Okay, so we got to this point now where it's Tundra, right? And now you're, you're trying to make your mark. Will you say that this is your your best team you've been on? Oh, I think definitely. But even with that said, there's still a lot to improve because there's always this. There's always something you can do better. Whatever it's communication, whether if it's gameplay, whether if it's your attitude, there, there's a lot of things to to make a team do well on, in a Dota setting. And there, it's, and a lot of it is outside of the game. Like you, there there there's like um, a lot of psychologies involved and a lot of like other things at work, maybe even dieting. I think a lot of these things are underrated. If you eat like crap, you're, not, you're gonna play like crap. But how long do you think you'll be playing Dota now going forward? You just keep going and then see, see when it finally ends. See where this will take me. And I'm just letting Dota take the wheel right now. I love it. Well, thank you very much for your time, man. It's an absolute pleasure getting to know you a bit more. I hope you had some fun on that one. And uh, yeah, yeah, good luck throughout the rest of the tournament. Let's see if those goals come true. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. See you guys next time.